welcome back to Between the Pages. I'm here once again with Alan Kistler, who just told me that he has two pieces in the new Star Trek and History yeah. book, right? Yeah, it's available at local bookstores and Amazon. I did a timeline. I can line. physically buy it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I did a timeline of the fictional Star Trek universe, and I also did an essay on Q. Oh, excellent. Very cool, very cool. What do you, just uh, real quick, what do you think of the alternate timeline they created for the Star Trek reboot? I, I was liking it at first, and <laughs> the new movie, I kind of went, well, what was the point? I agree. I agree. I took a lot of heat for that. I hope you, I hope you don't as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right, so we're going to continue our comics to film series, and today we're going to do a character that I think a lot of people are scratching their heads about, but are intrigued by, and that's Yukio. In, Her? In, yeah. <laughs> I think she looks cool. In the new Wolverine movie, she does. She has a bigger role than Mariko or uh, Mariko, right? Yeah, it, which <laughs> At is least from the trailer. Yeah, that's an odd choice, I feel. But uh, I think uh, Mariko just runs around and is all scared. But well, Yukio has the samurai sword, <laughs> which makes her instantly cooler. Yeah, Yukio showed up in the Wolverine miniseries, the first Wolverine mm -hmm. miniseries back in '82. She was one of uh, the samurai of Lord Shingen who wanted and Wolverine dead. Just to clarify, this is when all the Wolverine and Asia stuff was coming up, right? Th this, this was is... really the first time yeah. we saw Wolverine actually in Asia on on his own, in the in the East on his own. So a Wolverine movie gets something right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Shocker. Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing. Like we had known before that X Men had visited Japan, and Wolverine mentioned he'd spent some time there. <laughs> yeah. But they kind of were there for almost a weekend, and then they left. This was finally Wolverine's in Japan on his own. Let's see what he does. And he met Yukio, who was supposed to kill him, but then gets kind of a crush on him and decides, you know what? He's an all right guy. I'm going to help <laughs> him out. And and so she becomes a friend, and and she became a Ronin, a masterless samurai. Well, you said she works for. Uh... The, which, what's the, Lord Shingen, uh, originally, who, who, was, who was Mariko's father and, yes. and was the crime lord. All right, so that, I think, makes me believe that, that is going to be the role in the movie. We see that nice old guy in a like, cool like uh, metal chair, right? right. Uh, and apparently, I bet he must be a master criminal. It, it seems very likely, I mean, considering the circles Wolverine travels. In, That's right, yeah. He's it's like, more than likely. <laughs> That's who, of all the people he could have saved from an atomic bomb, that's the guy. It's how it works out uh, sometimes. Yeah, I, I was looking into this. I was actually very impressed. You know, Viper's in that original story. I mean, like, this Wolverine movie seems, you know, maybe not perhaps visually, but story-wise and the characters included, this is pretty true to the, to the original story. Yeah, it, it's using a lot, of, a lot of the essential elements, and it, it's very... I'm, I'm curious how they're going to alter it and, and redefine it for today's audiences. Yeah, because he didn't lose his healing power in that story. <laughs> right, exactly. This is touching on some areas. Also, one thing that the movie's going to do is this is a Wolverine who's in mourning. He, he's dealing with oh, the death yes. of Jean Grey. And in the miniseries, that, that didn't happen. Well, I, he still liked Jean Grey. He liked Jean Grey, yeah. but, I mean, at this point, she was dead, but it... it he was kind of over that. Like, he had other things well, go on as in As you life. pointed out, he didn't kill her in the original comic. Right, right. He did. Yeah. Uh, in, in, the, in the comic book, Jean kills herself, and Wolverine is sad but gets it. He, he understands she made a sacrifice. Wolverine's he, been there. Right, he kind of agrees with what she did, even yeah. though she, he misses her. In the movie universe, Wolverine was asked to kill Jean. Jean By said, Jean. Yeah, yeah, Jean said, please kill me, mm -hmm. which is falling in a trope, sadly. And, and, uh... <laughs> And Wolverine did so. So he is directly responsible for that, and he's dealing with that right now. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a mope. It makes both their characters a little mopey. Yeah. All right. Now, interestingly, you might have noticed that in the uh, Yukio comics to film, we haven't talked very much about Yukio. <laughs> yeah, there's really yeah. not a lot to say about Yukio. <laughs> she was just kind of there, and she was cool, she was helpful, and she showed up in Kitty Pride and Wolverine miniseries, which was also yeah. cool. And then. I mean, the biggest, the biggest impact she's had, really, is uh, Wolverine at one point adopted a daughter, mm -hmm. saying he would protect her and care for her as if she were his own. And so Wolverine translated that to, I'm going to give it to my girlfriend. No, to my, the girl I just kind of like lead on, not right. even my girlfriend. Well, it was like, it was, originally, he gave it to Mariko, <laughs> and then when she died, the kid went to foster care. Then Wolverine found out the foster parents were abusive, so then he, he brought it to Yukio. Well, that was actually a pretty good story because I know Yukio got really badly injured defending uh, that yes, kid and it yes. kind of pulled an oracle where she was put in a wheelchair and then she w asked Wolverine to kill her. Wolverine's just getting asked to kill people left and right here. This mm -hmm. time he said no. Yes, yes. And, and she did recover. And no, she has been... Like Oracle of... as well. 
<laughs> and she has been a part of good stories, but she's honestly not used it often. I mean, the, the biggest impact, like I said, she's had, one was she became foster mother to Wolverine's adopted mm -hmm. daughter. And two is that because of her, Storm got a mohawk. Yes. Yeah, she it was a style a style uh, status for Storm, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Because when Wolverine was about to get hitched, the X-Men came to Japan, Storm met Yukio, and was really taken with her. Like She's it, like, you look cool. She got a little bit of a girl crush on Yukio. Yeah. And she was like, you're really badass. And Yukio saved her life. And Yukio saved her life. And she was just really impressed with this person's uh, ability and strength and found herself wanting to be a little, explore a little wildness herself. Mm -hmm. And which did make sense because up to that point, Storm had been a very guarded character. Her powers don't have an off switch. So if she well, loses that's control. That's always been a problem for Storm in general. I right. think that's why people like the Mohawk look so much because they're like, finally, some character development. Right. And, and we had for a while a wild Storm, especially then when her powers were temporarily turned off. She got to engage in a little wildness and, uh, but then we got back to guarded Storm. Well, also speaking of Storm, Storm was friends with Gambit, and Yukio also kind of has like a, a rivalry going right. with Gambit, a friendly rivalry because they're both thieves. Exactly, they they're both quite good at stealing things and, and working from the shadows and sleight <laughs> of hand. So, and actually, one time Yukio framed Gambit for a, th a theft that she did. And the thing is, is you said Yukio is a Ronin, which yes. means a masterless samurai, and I think that's also interesting because you don't see a lot of female samurai in general. Or female Ronin. Which is why I think if you're going to make her have this interesting background or have this interesting trait, let's see a little more. Yeah. Because, like, right now, the way I see it, Yukio is just such a supporting character. In this in, movie, you mean? Or in comics? It, well, likely in the movie as well. But even in the comics, she's always really a supporting character. You don't imagine what great adventures she's having on her own. It's just how she affects Storm and how she relates to Wolverine's life. She's not quite her own person. Well, I think that's interesting you bring that up because I was thinking about the movie and my first thought was, I wish that Yukio was like kind of Wolverine's age instead of him just having another, you know, ingenue in Hollywood. But then it occurred to me that based on the look they've given her, and I heard the director describe it, James Mangold is like anime, like he really modeled her after anime characters. She almost seems to me like they've combined Jubilee and Yukio. Ah, you know, You know. I can, I can see that, I mean, Jubilee did appear in the movies, but she didn't adopt the same role. She like was in the background of the movies, exactly. right? Exactly. She got she captured like, in X-Men 2 yeah. and was just, <laughs> they didn't even say her name. You oh, just no, understood you... the Asian girl who's captured must be Jubilee. And, right, and yeah. they confirmed that later. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I can see your point. Like she is adopting that, that role. So, and would be actually combining that with Kitty Pride then, because in Kitty Pride and Wolverine, the miniseries, when Wolverine goes to Japan again, and there's a lot about the martial arts mastery and the culture, she, he's training Kitty Pride. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, Wolverine is somebody as a character who always has like a female sidekick. Yeah, uh, he's always like you know for he's like the rough guy, but he's always taking like some teenage girl under his wing yeah. in the appropriate manner. Yes, yes, <laughs> in the non sketchy he, manner. Yes, he's a gentleman because he's still always thinking of Jean Grey right. or Mariko. Is it Mariko or Mariko? I don't know that anyone. Knows. I I always I always said Mariko myself. Uh, I I've never heard it said in a cartoon. That's the thing or about anything, comics. So, yeah. You never hear this stuff out loud. It's like Dawkin. When I was at Marvel, they were like, "It's Dawkin," and I was like, "Who would ever guess it was Dawkin?" <laughs> so I think so. But one of the interesting things you were saying to me about uh, this character uh, was that you said she was more well known for her alternate universe personality. Yeah, I. I don't have the math in front of me, but I really feel like a third of the Yukio stories are alternate realities or possible futures. Which is funny because when her character shows up, when a character shows up in an alternate reality storyline, you're supposed to be like, oh, that's this new version, right. cool. But nobody's familiar with Yukio. Yeah, she, she's just, again, she's, oh, that woman who's taking care of Wolverine's foster daughter who's never mentioned Even in that is like really, you gotta like, really know your stuff even, to even know that. that. Like, yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, most people will just know, oh, that, that lady who convinced Storm to get a mohawk. That, that's really... I think really... even that, I think I would always see her and be like, oh, that's one of Wolverine's friends from his time in Japan. Yeah, yeah. That's all I would chalk it up to. But you know, one of the other things that was cool about this character, and a, a, an interesting point that I wonder if they'll have the, the, the strength of character not to mess with in the movie, is that she's not a mutant. You're talking about someone right. with no superpowers. No, she's, she's just a great sword fighter. Yeah, she's just a good fighter, and, and a dedicated fighter, and she is fun. Like, as much as we're making fun of her, she is a fun character, which is why I really think she's never reached her potential. Yeah, well, you know what? That's a good, yeah, I think that's totally true. I think that Yukio is always there for comic relief. She comes right. in, does her job, and she's never had a story arc. You know, I mean, she had that injured well, thing, but it was more f to reflect on Wolverine. She's yeah. just a sounding board for Wolverine, and, you know, wouldn't it be cooler to have him next to a woman than a guy? Yeah. 
typical, you know, stuff sometimes. I really hope they don't go the silent woman killer route. It looks to be the way they're going. Because I've seen it before, <laughs> and they did that with Lady Deathstrike in X-Men 2, where one of oh, the yeah. most talkative villains in comics is a mute. And, yeah, and she was always monologuing. Yeah. She, she was yeah. a monologuer. She, she needed you to know how worthy vengeance was. Well, that's her whole, that was her whole thing. Like, Lady Deathstrike wasn't, like, uh, a criminal who wanted to rob anybody or right. had an agenda. She just strictly hated Wolverine. Yeah, this was a vendetta. Yeah. And she needed you to know that. She needed you to know that this was a just cause. And, and so she shows up in X-Men 2, and I'm very excited. And Kelly, who... Did an amazing job with her. Oh, that was a great fight scene. No, with, like, was, with like the backstabbing. I still it, remember that. Amazing yeah. fight and a really good performance. A yeah. really good performance. But she was mute the whole time. And I just thought, really? Well, same with Yukio. Yukio is a chatterbox. Yeah. I and mean, she has a lot of spunk. Yeah, so I really, really don't want her to, to fall into the silent woman killer trope. Well, sometimes when you have foreign actors, it's a, it's a language barrier. But it wasn't with Kelly Hugh. Who yeah. spoke perfect English? If you see the Scorpion King. Yeah, and and she's a voice on Kim, uh, not Kim Possible, uh, Phineas and Ferb. Yeah. And and yeah, so there was no there was no excuse there other than just you went into a trope. But this actress is actually a fashion model from Tokyo who's playing Yukio, which I think is interesting. But so far she looks like she can handle the action sequences, and she has like a cool look. I yeah. think. No, she. I think she looks great. Yeah. So I'm excited to see what we get here. Uh, it's and again, it's another great opportunity for the movies to define a character that needs some defining. Yes, yeah, and and if they can really bring some life and, and some interest in her, and then that can translate back into the comics, as yeah. sometimes happens. I mean, Blade became a much more interesting character after the movie. You know, I'm all for that. Yeah, I hope they don't de-age her though. I think you know, keep Yukio and Jubilee separate in the comics. Yes, I agree with that.